Mongols. Hi everyone, I'm back, and this is the final lecture for Unit 4A. Lecture number seven, the Mongols. Mongols. Okay, this lecture is basically a review of ninth grade stuff on the Mongols, because you know, you all seem to forget this by 10th grade. So hopefully this will provide a quick summary on the Mongols, and I've been speaking about these people briefly during my last two lectures on Russia and the Turks. So here we go. You learned last year that the Chinese had a series of emperors who led powerful ruling families called dynasties for thousands of years. These dynasties would secure their right to rule using the concept of mandate of heaven or the God-given right to rule. We're going to talk more about the God-given right to rule when we get into the Middle Ages and beyond in Europe because rulers there are going to use a similar right to rule. These dynasties had a cyclical pattern of rule called the dynastic cycle in which a particular family or dynasty would gain power and claim the mandate of heaven when another dynasty was in decline, usually following a period of warfare or decline after a natural disaster. The old family would be blamed for the problems and a new family or dynasty would claim the right to rule and take over for a few generations until it all happened again. Mongols were from Central Asia, and they're going to end up taking over the world. Yes, they actually established the largest empire in history through ruthless warfare. The Mongols were originally pastoralists, which is to say that they were nomads who traveled from place to place with herds of domesticated animals in tow. Pastoral settings are field-like or pasture-like settings, right? So that's just a little vocab word there for you folks, pastoralist is based on a pastoral word meaning field or pasture. Anyway, the Mongols lived a pastoral lifestyle and established themselves as master horsemen. It was their development of the stirrup that allowed them to conquer the world. Seriously, a little piece of leather from a saddle that allowed the Mongols to stand up while riding was perhaps the best military technology ever invented. The early Mongols lived in clans, which were basically big extended families. Various clans traded things like horses with one another and eventually developed a common culture. The Mongols emerged from these pastoral and clan-based people from the steppes of Central Asia. In fact, it's believed that the Huns who attacked the Roman Empire, remember Attila, they might have been early relatives of the Mongols. Just saying. <laughs> The Mongols emerged as a united group around 1200 AD under the leadership of a man named Temujin. Temujin, which was spelled T-E-M-U-J-I-N, was able to use his military prowess to take over much of Asia in just 21 years. Genghis Khan launched campaign after campaign of pillaging and terror across Central Asia and Anatolia. He was able to do this using military strategies and organization. For instance, he organized his troops into 1,000 man brigades in armies that often surpassed 10,000 men. He was also great at tricking his enemies, often leading them to believe his army was much smaller than it actually was. He did this by sending out a mini army in advance. They would get pummeled and then retreat. When his enemy took off after Khan's retreating troops, he would suddenly show up with his entire, or Genghis rather, would suddenly show up with his entire army and annihilate the enemies. Genghis was also the master of creating fear within those he conquered, sometimes killing entire cities of people and allowing a few survivors to tell others of his exploits. Fear is a great way to make people obey. Genghis later passed on his rule to his family members. By 1250, the Mongols had almost reached Rome and Vienna, but then stopped their westward expansion. We've already learned that they took over much of modern-day Russia and parts of Turkey and forced their captors to pay a tribute. Their territories were divided into different regions, which became known as the Khanates. Okay, so it looks like Genghis Khan, but Khanates. But we also know that the Mongols um, might, um, they they might have been really, really powerful, and they might have been pretty kick-booty when it came to conquering, but they were also pretty inept when it came to ruling over those that conquered. It was for this that they usually let the locals maintain their leadership in exchange for not killing them via tribute. Their conquered peoples would pay a large tribute to them, so think massive amounts of cash, in exchange for peace. 
This actually led to a golden age under the Mongols called Pax Mongolia. Yep, that should remind you of Pax Romana, that 200 years of Roman peace we learned about last unit. Pax means peace, remember? So Pax Mongolia was a 100-year period under the Mongols from around the 1200s to 1300s, where there was relative stability across Eurasia, or the European and Asian continent. Pax Mongolia is sometimes called Pax Mongolica. It's the same thing, people. Anyway, the Mongol Empire was divided up into separate khanates, each ruled by different khans or emperors. Genghis Khan's grandson ruled over the khanate that included Mongolia, Tibet, Korea, and northern China. His name was Kublai Khan, spelled K-U-B-L-A-I-K-H-A-N. It was Kublai Khan who established the Yuan, Yuan Dynasty, so that's Y-U-A-N, U, or I'm sorry, y -U -A -N, the Yuan Dynasty, around 1300. It lasted until around 1368, which doesn't seem like a long time, but the Yuan Dynasty accomplished some pretty darn important things. First of all, Kublai Khan united all of China for the first time in 300 years, and he significantly expanded Chinese trade throughout the world. Kublai Khan led a very settled life compared to most Mongols, unlike his ancestors, and he had palaces actually built for himself, so he settled in one place. He's going to move his capital from Mongolia all the way into China. Khan tried to take control over Japan, but was not successful. He did, however, focus on building up China's infrastructure with roads and bridges. He also used ethnically Chinese people as advisors to help bridge the gap between Chinese and Mongol societies. Kublai Khan also conducted extensive trade, and he helped make the Silk Road um, a very powerful trade route. He was also known to have invited foreign dignitaries to his court, including Christian missionaries from the West. His most famous visitor, perhaps, was Marco Polo around 1275. Marco Polo was a Venetian trader, so Venice was an Italian city-state at the time. The Polo family served in Khan's court for over 17 years before going back to Europe. Kublai Khan died in 1294, and the Yuan dynasty fell apart by 1368, when a new dynasty seized power and claimed the Mandate of Heaven. This became known as the Ming dynasty. The various Khanates across Asia and Europe fell apart and were completely gone by 1480 AD. And there, there you have it. That's all there is, and hopefully that was a brief but uh, helpful review on the Mongols. Thanks for listening. Bye. Mongols.